Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian and I'm a structural engineer. So we just did a physical demonstration of how cables work by using um, physical string and some little packets of rice as weight so that we could see how putting weights on different parts of the cable changed how the cable moved because it had to, it had no other choice. It had to move to carry the tension in the direction of the force that was going through it and carrying that force in tension back to the supports. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show a set of images. This is going to be the first one. And through those, we're going to do exactly the same as the physical demonstration, but as diagrams. And what you'll see is every time there is tension, I'm using the color red. So today, everything's going to be red because it's cables, and that's all the cables could do. And the deeper the color red, the larger the tension will be in the cable. So sort of a visual way of representing what we saw by sort of twanging the string. Um, so here we go, there's a vertical string, it's carrying a weight, and there's a hand holding it up. The tension is the same all the way up the string, all the way up the cable. It has to be, because the weight is the weight, and the tension is equal to the weight. It's all balanced, all in equilibrium, as we say. Now, if we separate out just slightly by, say, putting that weight in the middle of some string and holding our two hands apart just a bit, now, if you've noticed, we'll go back, the colour of the red has just, just dipped slightly, it's gone lighter. Why? Because half the weight of, of this, this weight at the bottom is going up to one hand and half to the other, right? Each hand's basically helping carry half the weight. But as we'll see, even though the weight doesn't change, as you try to pull the cables further and further apart, this weight will start moving up. This little small bit is is equal to um, the red of the weight of the of the this anvil at the end. And um, as we're pulling further and further up, you'll see that's a very, very deep red at the top. And you probably know this intrinsically, right? The more you want to pull um, a, a, weight, a string with some weight in the middle, the, the larger the tension is. You're pulling more, even though this weight hasn't changed how heavy it is, right? And so your horizontal force has increased while the vertical part that you're carrying has not changed. But the total of the sort of resultant, as we call it, of the horizontal force you're putting in and that same vertical that stays steady as you move it up, and this is sort of slowly moved up, is going to increase as this is the biggest tension we're putting into the cable. And then you remember I sort of moved it over to the side, and here you can see a darker red over to this side than the other. And that should also make sense, because after all, as they keep moving it over to this side, and I was directly under one hand, that would be like the very first image, where one hand is carrying all the weight, and the other one's really not doing anything. And here we have the really sort of interesting part where, if it's all symmetric, and we have two weights, then the horizontal amount that these, these hands are pulling to each side that's exactly equal to the horizontal force that's going through this part of the cable, because that is horizontal. But there is a bigger tension going through the two parts of the cable either side. It's really interesting this. It's the same cable. It can be continuous, which it was when I was doing the, the string with the packets of rice, going all around. But right here, right at that point where we've added weight, the tension increases in this part of the cable. And it has to. Why? Because this weight, all of this is going up this cable and has some vertical amount, but there is also a horizontal amount that is being applied to the system simply because one hand is to the right and one hand is to the left. Right? There's, that's how we span distances. So, and this being symmetric is exactly the same on the other side. And we can keep adding weights to this. Um, this is sort of putting it now with one in the middle again. This part right here, just this area, the tension in these would be, I'm going to go back, exactly the same as when we had the same geometry, which was somewhere between these two before. Right? So these systems work, and you can kind of add to them as you go up. Highest tension, lower tension. And right here, we've got some tension, more, and even more. And we can keep adding weights to this as we go. And that was a very interesting moment here, which is it doesn't matter where these weights are in height, whether they are here or dropped down to that position. They're still just vertical weights. 
And the reason, of course, I've done this is because this may remind you more of what suspension bridges look like. Suspension bridges are exactly this, a big main cable with vertical hangers holding weight along, along the deck of a bridge. And so this was the example we gave. The Golden Gate Bridge is sort of one of the, the best-known suspension bridges. You have the big main cable going up to these towers. In this case, in this case, if I go back to here, you see how those hands are going up and to the side? What you've got is the up part is being held by the towers, but, you, but the rest of the cable goes back, what's called the back spans, to, to balance out that horizontal force. But this is the drape that a main cable takes. The actual shape is called a parabola. If you have an equal load spaced horizontally across a span, then you, as you put those loads together, the shape of the cable becomes parabolic. So if you've done that in, in, when you do study maths, then you, the, if you wonder, why am I studying parabolas? Well, you use them in the design of suspension bridges, among other things. And I love this. This is an old picture of the Manhattan Bridge during construction. I wanted to show this because obviously we build structures step by step. And you'll see as there's a real large uh, sweep to the bottom of the hangers at this location. Um, so as they're going to add the other bits of deck, that top cable is going to sag down a bit. And the final position of the deck will be lower than what you see right here. We never sort of build bridges to be totally flat, a little bit of a camber to them, drainage and everything, but it will be less than what you see here. So as they did this, they had to think through the sequence of those to know where these were going to be as they're going to add the different bits of deck to it. So here we go. That is cables as a basic understanding. All of this has been, as you've noticed, qualitative rather than quantitative, because in this, in this aspect, Cables don't do formulas, right? We do. We apply arrows and numbers to it to make sure we can quantify these things. But the very important first step is to understand how cables work. So this was the first of our sort of primary colors of structure.